Once we know our z-scores, we can figure the z-scores out by looking at the table of probabilities, for example, in table A, in, in the back of our book. We need to convert our z-scores into x-values. So we're going to go from standardized x-scores, uh, z-values, into x-values. And remember that z equals x-bar minus, oh, sorry, z equals x minus x bar all over s. And therefore, and therefore, uh, x equals x bar plus z times s. And we already said from the previous page that x bar is 68, and S was 108. Sorry, S squared was 108. So we'll just take the square root of S squared, which is a little bit more than 10, but for the sake of simplicity, we'll just leave it as 10 for now. So what we're going to do is take each z-score and convert it into an x-value by plugging the z-score in over here. So in the first case, we have x equals x-bar 68 minus, and we'll take, we've already done the first one up above, so let's do this one now, minus, sorry, plus minus 0 0.84 times s, which is 10, which is 68 minus 8.4 59.6. And we're just going to do that for each of these z-scores. And these uh, new x values are going to be the cutoff points of the 10% regions that we had using our z-scores. Once we know what our, uh, our cutoffs are in our x's, we can look at our data table and count how many x's we actually observe in each of our uh, percentiles. So in order to do that, we first see how many observations are, b are between 0 and 55.2. And if we go back to our table, we see that there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 observations in that first range. Next, we have to look at the number of observations between 55.2 and 59.6. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in that range as well. So we fill in this table. We had 5 in the first range, 5 in the second range, then we had 9, 6, and so on. Finally, in our last range, it was the range between 80.8 and the maximum score of 100. Next, we have to compute the chi-squared statistic. In this case, the expected value is 5 for all i. That's because we split up the normal curve such that we would see 10% of values in each percentile, in each, in, each, uh, in each decile. And since we have 50 scores in our empirical distribution, we, if we were to expect to see 10% in each group, we would expect to see 5 in each group. So in order to compute this, we have to uh, sub in 5 for OI. Let's do it on this table. Sorry, for EI. EI equals 5 for all of these values, okay? And now we have to do OI minus EI. 0, 0, uh, 4, 1, minus 3, 0, minus 3, 0, 0, 1. And square it. OI minus EI squared. 0, 0, 16, 1, 9, 0, 9, 0, 0, 1. And divide that by EI. So we have to put it over 5. OI minus EI squared over EI. 0, 0, 16 over 5, 1 fifth, 
nine fifths, zero nine fifths, zero zero one fifth, and then we add that all up. And when we've added it all up, we find that it's equal to seven point two. So we have a chi-squared statistic equal to seven point two.